morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. I got lots of good information and news today, including an interview with David Laurie Vanderbeek. That's coming up, so stay tuned. Let's jump into our cosmic weather for today. See what we have to deal with as we go out and about in the world. All right, solar wind is 290 kilometers per second. You can see we have a slim chance of flares. It's showing us right here. Our planetary K index is at the moment as a zero. Probably going to get as high as a one the next 24 hours. We do have this coronal hole, which is right here. And again, this is, as you could see, it's a part of a triangle. You could very easily see this would be the bottom part. And right up here, if we were to follow this line, you could see it would come up here. So, still do have this triangle in the sun. It keeps showing up in different ways. What is it about? Don't know. But remember the images that we have seen, the Mayan images that had picture of the sun with the black triangle. And then in the... Uh, was the temple in Versailles above that there's a, a sun with a huge triangle in it there so very interesting very interesting okay we see that our chance for flares are low 10% chance for an M class flare and geomagnetic storm activity is also pretty low as well though if you're in a higher latitude it's pretty steady that you're gonna get something 15% chance you're gonna get something alright moving from there Let's go over to our astrology for today. See what we're dealing with right here. So we've got our two lights we're dealing with, our sun and our moon. Sun is conscious mind, moon is the unconscious mind. So our sun right now is in Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Aquarius is an air sign, so our conscious mind is dealing with air. Air moves, air is represents communication, uh, the words we speak, the actions we take, and then underneath our unconscious is in a void of course state. Void of course means it's going between two elements, so we really don't have one or the other. We're leaving the element of air, which is Gemini, and we're moving into the element of water, which is Cancer. Air is words and actions, communication, cancerous feelings. So we're moving into a point of feeling, a real feeling period of time, and as you know, during the Cancerian times and, and the energy, there's a lot of heaviness. A lot of emotions can come from that period of time. Cancer the crab has the hard shell to protect one from the emotions. That's the idea. So that's where we're at today. We're at a void, of course, moon. And void, of course, is a time where you, know, you may find that you're not completely focused in one or the other that there's a little bit of a transition taking place with you as well because we are affected by the lights of the sun and the moon and the other planets so during a void of course as you're transitioning from one element to the next that's what you're dealing with all right kind of like if you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and you're going to get one ingredient and then you go get the next that's where we're at switching ingredients okay so just know how those elements work in life. You got air on the top, water on the bottom. They can create uh, some good stuff, but they can also be really intense and create a lot of craziness as well. Our moon phase today is almost a full moon. We're at 89% of the way there. Our Mayan Oracle shows us that it's a six-tone day. We're on the theme of the eagle, which is vision. So we're at the rhythmic position of vision. Not only is it the rhythmic position, but it's the sun. The sun is all about enlightenment. So today is called the rhythmic sun, guided by the sun. If you remember on the ones, the sixes, and the elevens, the daykin and the guide are always the same. Our phrase for today is, I organize in order to enlighten balancing life. I seal the matrix of universal fire with the rhythmic tone of equality. I am guided by my own power doubled, and on the Gregorian calendar is the 23rd of January 2013. So there you have it. That's what we're dealing with for today. So yesterday, I did the first part of an interview with, that uh, Dolores Cannon did back in 2010. It's a four-parter. Really good interview. Lots of good information. You know, did you learn anything new from there? 
I like hearing uh, Dolores talk and what she has to say. Makes a lot of sense to me. Anyway, there's more great information, so I want to go ahead and play for you part two so you can uh, hear everything else that she has to say. All right, here we go. Or they go back to the source. And I have whole sections in my book describing what everyone says the source is, God. Mm -hmm. They all describe it the same way. Mm -hmm. These are souls that have never been in any kind of a body at all. Can you imagine how uh, traumatic it would be to come pure from the source and to this world Yes, now? I can. <laughs> Very disturbing. Very but challenging. Many people have done that. They go yes. back to the source where they are one with God, where we all began. People are always asking me, they say in their session, I want to know where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So we're all from the same place. Mm -hmm. And they want to know, well, what about my home? I said, it's all the same place. They think of a home planet or something like that. That's not what it's about. It's all, us. we all came from the source, from God, and that's where we all began. And when they're there, it is so full of love, and it's all this togetherness that they don't want to leave. Yes. So in the sessions, I asked them, well, why did you leave? It was so beautiful. I know they left because I'm talking to a body that's laying on the bed. Why did you leave? And they all say the same thing. We heard the call. They heard the call that went out, even to the other planets, to the space people, and to the ones who had never been out in from the source. We heard the call, Earth is in trouble. Will you go and help? And many of them describe meetings on the spirit side even, where they're saying, who wants to go and help? And I had one woman said, and I raised my hand. <laughs> and she said, what was I thinking of? No, there you go. So here she is, and here many of them are. And this story, so there are these consistencies you're hearing. Oh, I, I do waves. thousands and thousands of people. Yes. When I mean, you get the same story for so many people, I put this all together like a puzzle. Yes. Bits and pieces. So the first way were the ones that had the most trouble. I guess you would say they were in their later 50s, some were in their 40s, but people, some people say they think the early 60s would fall into the same pattern. It probably will because that's about how long ago yeah, that we dropped the bomb. Mm -hmm. But these are the ones who don't want to be here. They're very unhappy. They have good families, they have jobs, but they don't want to be here. They don't like it. They want to go home. They don't know where home is, but they know it's not here. They don't like the violence. They don't understand it. And many of these first waivers have tried to commit suicide at different points in their life to get out of here. I have a question at this point. If they, if they came in <clears throat> and they went through the traditional thing that happens when you incarnate here, which is essentially a case of amnesia, and they don't understand consciously what they're doing here, what are they functionally doing while they're here to help shift those frequencies <clears throat> or further this evolutionary process? The first wave are just living like everybody else. It's the second wave that are doing the different things. But the first wave are the ones who they don't want to be here mm -hmm. and they wanted to commit suicide and they've had a very hard time. But the second wave, I found, would be in their 20s, 30s, maybe some over into the 40s. And when I'm doing them, they are, they've said they are called antennas, generators. They're here just to generate positive energy mm -hmm. to an, affect everyone else. Yes, that makes sense. My son is in that age group, and he and his friends are just beautiful beings who really do work toward generating communal friendships, supporting each other, non-judgment. It's beautiful. Well, they said those kind of people can walk through a crowded mall or a store and their energy will affect anyone that is there. Yes. Not consciously. They don't realize what they're doing. But their energy is supposed to be generated to affect other people. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come and say, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing here? And the second wave, they'll usually say, you're just to be. And they don't like that when they wake up. They say, but I wanted to be doing something. All you're supposed to do is just be and allow the energy to affect other people. Yes. But the irony of it is that a lot of the second waivers don't like people. 
and they don't want to be around them. Their energy bothers them, but they're supposed to be affecting yes, people, so yes. they stay home. So they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. A lot of the second waivers, some of the first and the second do get married, but a lot of them don't want to because it's just... Uh, it, it's, it's sticky, just it's dense, them. yes. And the second wave especially, they don't want to have children because they said having children creates karma. And they don't want to make any more karma. They want to do what they're supposed to do and get out of here. They mm -hmm. don't want to be stuck here because mm -hmm. if they create karma, they're going to have to stay. So many of them don't want children, and they work from their home. The second waivers do, so they keep away from people. But they're very gentle, loving people. And I asked them one time, well, why did the first wave have such a hard time? And they said, somebody has to be the beginning. Somebody has to be the one that cr creates the path, the way shore. And they started, and then the others, the second wave, followed, so they had an easier time. Yes. And that makes sense. That's the and difference. now their children are these little amazing little three, four, five, six. Well, not theirs. It's just the third wave. The third wave, yeah, yes. Okay. The third wave of because beings. Because some of them some don't want be, children. Right. Some of them could be, they're born to whomever. But that next one is really interesting. The third wave are the, the children. And some of them now are in their teens. But these are the hope of the world. They're the gift of the world. They're here to really make a difference. And... Um, of course, the last thing these children should be doing done is put on medicine oh, and medication. Gosh. Oh, that's the the last thing not even because they are functioning at a different level. They have come in with all of their genetics; everything is in place because they are a totally new species. And I've spoke at conferences about the new children, where they're trying to educate the educators, and they have panels of these kids. And you know, they're always saying, "Well, they're bo they're." disruptive in the classrooms. That's why they have to put them on the medication. And they've said at the conferences, the reason is they're disruptive is because they're bored. Yes. They said the, they say the teacher would ask them for an answer to a problem, a math problem or something. They tell them the answer. The teacher wants to know, how did you find the answer? And they said, I just know it. And to them, that's not enough. They want them to explain how they came by it. So that's very aggravating to one yes. of these children. And another thing, they said they go over and over and over again the same material when I got it the first time. So they're bored. So what I was told to tell people, the teachers and the parents, is to give these kids challenges. But the other kids are doing the other stuff. Take these kids aside, maybe give them a special project, a paper to write or something different that will challenge their minds. And they said, even if you just give them something, the younger ones, something to tear apart and put back together again, yes, it's giving them a challenge. So they can use their creativity and their yeah. knowledge. Yes. Otherwise, they're sitting around, well, I, I don't, you know, I'm bored. I don't want to do this again. Give them something different. And that's what, how they should be treated. And they have a different way of thinking because they do grasp everything so quickly. So what are they being, they've incarnated specifically for um, helping guide humanity, uh, what, not just technologically, but in terms of science, in, in every which way, because of their ability yeah, to retain like knowledge? Like I said, they're the gift of the world. Yeah. Uh, Nova had a special, oh, it's been a few years ago now, where some of these kids were 10 years old and have already graduated from college. Yes. And some of these have already formed their own organizations. And it's interesting that a lot of the organizations they are found, have founded have to do with helping the children of the world. Yes, yes, I'm so aware of that. So this is where they are going. So they're going to be much more giving the gift of um, not just crea creating conscious community again on the planet, mm -hmm. using... Getting it back to what it's supposed to be. Getting it back to what it's supposed because to be, Because the yes. rest of them are caught into the wheel of karma. They don't yeah. know how to solve their own problems, right. let alone the world's problems. These people don't have those uh, basic karmic problems, so they can just go in a different way. I, I, and they're putting the world into this new world, the new earth, because we're headed toward a wonderful time. Yes, that, the that's the good news. Technology will be used in a wonderful way. So many wonderful things are happening. So these new children have a part in it. 
and the first and second waves have a part, but they've had difficulty. And so from this point forward, <clears throat> it should become much more harmonious for the beings that are choosing to incarnate during this be. period. Because as you write about, this period is going to lead us to essentially parallel Earths in a sense. Yes. And this has been, I've heard about this, and even from my guides was told about this 25 years ago, and they're just very slow. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. This is the UFO News for today. Five stories. Story number one comes to us from uh, EducatingHumanity.com. It's UFO Flies Through Time Lapse Video. This is a really interesting looking video here. Gavin. Heffernan just finished this really beautiful day and nighttime lapse of Death Valley's dunes. At first, the UFO appears as nothing more than an insect, but that is simply a product of the speed of the film. Though we almost froze, we got some amazing stars, Gemini meteors, star trails, planets, and even a UFO, he says. As the UFO appears at 1.30 to 1.35. So let's take a look at the video here. Or maybe not. Try this here. All right, one more try. All right, doesn't seem to want to. Uh, there we go. All right, not really any way to fast forward on this, so we'll get there momentarily. Anyway, well, that's going on. Let me jump over here. This is a green luminous object witnessed at two Georgia locations. Georgia witnesses at two locations reported green luminous objects that may have moved to the ground level on January 20, 2013, according to testimony from the MUFON Witness Reporting Database. The first witness was driving northbound along I-75 near Calhoun, Gordon Country, about 4 a.m. on the 20th. With the exception of a car in front of me, the road was empty. The witness stated, then a very bright green object just appeared. Sky ahead of me wasn't flying the path, it just appeared and sort of dropped an angle, but you can tell it was a path to the ground and then disappeared under the tree line. I was able to see enough detail that it appeared to be a ship. All right, let's jump back over here. All right, this is where we should be seeing it. Shooting across. All right, it was very quick when it jumped across. There you go. Alright, so the link's available so you can check that out. And let's move on to our next story. This one is from a triangle UFO over California coast, according to Military Witness. This again is from Roger Marsh, UFO Digest. Um, a California witness at Oceanside reported watching a triangle shaped object heading south in parallel with the coast highway at an altitude of 200 feet, according to recent testimony from the MUFON database. The witness was outside the balcony at 10.50 p.m. on the 12th of January when the object was first observed lit by the street lights of the coast highway. There was three red lights in an equilateral triangle and none were lit, the witness stated. They were heading south parallel with coast highway about 200 feet. I'd estimate the lights at 50 feet apart. I watched for close to 20 seconds before it was out of range. Estimated speed was about 80 to 100 miles per hour. The witness has a military background and could still not identify the object. All right, moving from there, our next story is from a site called latest-ufos.com. This is a UFO video over eastern Denver, Colorado on the 23rd. All right, let's take a look at this here. OK, 
Okay, it's almost a four minute video here. All right. There's object in question. Okay, just skipping ahead. You can see the video blinking in and out, or the uh, object. Alright, so the link's available, uh, latest-ufosightings.com. And our last story here for today from the UFO Report talked about this the other day. Here's another article on this subject. Former UFO skeptic and astronomer, now UFO sky watcher. Astronomer and former skeptic, now avid night vision UFO watcher. On January 21st, UFO AM, today's top UFO news, caught up with the videographer Charles Lamoureux, an exclusive interview that explores his personal journey from skeptic to UFO sky watcher, dream premonitions, and connections to the mid-20th century local UFO history. Uh, according to a report from CTV News, had featured mysterious entity flying past the 21st story of Yaletown Balcony as captured in night vision by the seasoned local amateur astronomer. I have a great hobby. I love it. It's astronomy. I have many telescopes. I've been doing this for about 20 to 25 years. Both a registered nurse and a medical industry consultant, the YouTube contributor stated that a diamond-shaped object crossing the sky in front of the moon was an early sign that pursuing his interest in 11-11 related studies has led him into the realm of something really strange. And you can go, he says one day he was out looking at the, the moon three years ago, a big full moon, he wanted to take some great photos of it, all of a sudden an object goes right across the moon, it was really beautiful, it was diamond shaped. And the story goes on from there. So I think we're going to see more people like this who are skeptics that will come forward understanding that there's something more going on out there. So for all the UFO news stories uh, on the left hand side of the page we have links to all of these sites here and a variety of others so check them out, check them out, check them out. That's our UFO news for today. I'm gonna jump away for a moment. I'll be right back. I got some more news and an interview. Stay tuned. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. All right, continuing on. I got a bunch to get to here. Okay, I'm going to do uh, three stories before we get to this interview. Three quick stories. Uh, the first one here, you've heard all about fluoride and the problems that it creates. Well, this is a documentary. It's an hour and five minutes long. Well worth watching because it's well worth the information. And you probably already know what's going on out there with the fluoride. However, I'm sure that you know people around you that are highly skeptical of such things and uh, pass this information on to them. Okay? Pass this information on to them. I'm going to play a small portion of this, just a couple minutes so you can see what it is, and then the link is available so you can watch it on your own. Here we go. As a result of fluoridation, our children will be healthier and happier. My whole class decided to look into fluoride because we wanted to learn everything we could about it. 
At first, I was a bit indifferent about fluoridated water, sad to say. <laughs> Over the year, though, I discovered more about fluoride and now jump at almost every opportunity to argue against its presence in our water. I found that fluoride has been linked to osteoporosis, birth defects, dental fluorosis, skeletal fluorosis, possibly leading to lower IQ levels, and more. No fluoridation without representation. A gulp of fluoride water a day does not keep the doctors away. These are the words etched into some of the buttons children from my class have created. You may be wearing one of them now. These pretty pieces of political artwork symbolize only a small part of the work we have been doing after a long effort to discover the answer to whether or not fluoride should be added to our water. Using research, creating surveys, conducting science experiments on how fluoridated water affects plants, eggshells, chicken bones, and more, to find out the truth about sodium fluorosilicate. Help us win the fight to get rid of our fluoride plight. Why even have fluoride in water when we can easily buy fluoride toothpaste if we choose to? We're not even being asked if we want this so-called medication in water. And finally, why do we drink fluoridated water if it can cause possible health problems? Join the fight to ban fluoride from water today. We are now number 42 in the, some of the data I looked at on the, the infant mortality list. In other words, 41 countries at least have infants that live at a higher rate than they do in the United States. And if you take, and we used to be in the top three for longevity. If you look at the infant mortality rate of the top four countries, which includes Sweden, Finland, uh, I think uh, Singapore, and some others, and you subtract that level, from the death rate in the United States, they're roughly one-third the death rate of what we see in the United States. And if you consider our total population, almost 18,000 babies a year die in the United States that would not die if we had the infant death rate of uh, Sweden. You know, you bring up an interesting point about the uh, fluoridation without representation. I mean, I'm talking about the health, the health problems with this now. But on a greater level, this is forced medication of the public because the government says so. What's next? They don't think we're happy enough, so they put some Xanax in our water supply because they're allowed to because there's a government? It's outrageous. And everyone you hear supporting this down the road is going to be someone working for the government or some industry that's supported by the government or group. They, they have these, whack, these, these fancy names, but they're all supported by either the drug industry or by the government when you hear from them. Okay, so as you can hear, there's something very important in this documentary. So I would encourage you to take an hour and five minutes out of your day and l play the whole video. All right, the link will be available so you can check it out. Let's continue to move on. Next up, we have three minute news suspicious observers. Let's check this out. Here we go. Good morning, folks. This is the first operational photograph taken by Meteosat 10 as it replaces Meteosat 9 courtesy of NOAA's Environmental Visualization Lab. This shows you just how complete the Australian heat wave was, perhaps I shouldn't use the past tense there. EU, staving off GMO corn, 10 points guys beat them back as long as you can. Coming to the RSOE alert map we see three little piggies on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Wait a minute, those aren't piggies, quite the volcanic day in northeast Russia. Southeast Pacific Ridge was rocking a bit, and luckily the matching subduction zone quakes were not bigger. Southeastern parts of Africa took inches of rain yesterday. The flooding has spread beyond the initial areas to South Africa as well. Cyclone Gary and Cyclone Animal Love are visible here. You'll note Oswald is gone now, but the damage to North Queensland areas has been done. Gary got a mean left hook, but isn't very good with the compass. Cyclone Peta already atop the west coast, and not expected to strengthen much as it crosses west and into the Indian Ocean. Two comments for Europe right now. First, this spinning cloud system is a thunderstorm, wind, and flooding threat to the Mediterranean. And as the weekend approaches, it is going to get very cold. Top part of the frame, you can see a lot of lake effect snow, record levels set in New York. There are no large low pressure systems present, just low temperatures, as that does say negative 48 degrees. How cold is it north of the border? Oh, and we might see frost south of the border. After 20 days without a gamma burst, we got one from way up north out of Ursa Major. A solar wind telemetry shows the speed in yellow dipping below 300 kilometers per second. Very low, indicative of weakening solar magnetics and allowing increasing cosmic ray density showing on the second panel from both spaceship Earth and the muon monitors. Yesterday we watched one plasma filament rip away, but 
Watch how it affects the field of the filament further south. We'll watch this twice so you can see the tug. When I noticed that, I decided to get some parting shots, figuring we didn't have much longer before we had to say goodbye to this one too, and as I dreamt the night away, she slipped through the sun's grasp and released to the heavens. As she did so, heading south away from the earth, a simultaneous surface event occurred from the active region we're watching on the northwest. This is that spot that was born before our eyes. The beautiful eruptive feature did not produce a large CME. Speaking of these active regions and magnetic classification, haven't even had a C flare from this group in days. NOAA has it labeled beta gamma, but since last night's labeling, the complexity has disappeared. Clearly separated polarity indicates it's just beta. Northeastern limb has some candidates, including one way north for this part of the cycle. Earth footprint is grainy on the right side, means it's behind the limb, still attached completely to that mega spot that disappeared a few days ago. If it pops, we could feel it. Also got the coronal hole pointed right at us, coronal hole stream on its way. If you missed the video from two nights ago, Energy from Space, it is linked right below this video or you can search for it easily. It was meant to be viewed by newbies, those of your friends and family not yet awake and who might not respond to the wilder theories and videos on YouTube. We can wake up a lot of folks with the elite's own words. Remember, they're still asleep drinking that mainstream propaganda. Wake them up, then dump the rest on them to see if it sticks. I want our community to be taken seriously so very much. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. All right, very good. Another good report. Moving on from there. Okay. So we've got some cold weather. Looks like heading our way. Um, this is an article from the Extinction Protocol, and it goes on to show these graphics here, and then it says, An unusual, and this is from today, an unusual event playing out high in the atmosphere above the Arctic Circle is setting the stage for what could be weeks upon weeks of frigid cold across wide swaths of the United States, having already helped to bring cold, snowy weather to parts of Europe, Forecast, high temperatures on Monday the 28th from GFS computer model. This phenomenon known as sudden stratospheric warming event started on January 6th, but is something that is just beginning to have an effect on weather patterns across the North American Europe. But while the physicists behind the sudden stratospheric warming events are, are complicated, their implications are not. Such events are often harbingers of colder weather in North America and Eurasia. The ongoing event favors colder and possible stormier weather for as long as four to eight weeks after the event, meaning that after a mild start to the winter, the rest of the month of February could bring the coldest weather of the winter season to parts of the U.S., along with a heightened chance of snow. Sudden stratospheric warming events take place about half of all northern hemisphere winters, and they have been occurring with increased frequency during the past decade, possibly related to the loss of the Arctic sea ice due to global warming. Arctic sea ice declined to its small extent on record in September 2012, Sudden stratospheric warming events occur when large atmospheric waves known as Rusby waves extend beyond the troposphere where most weather occurs and into the stratosphere. This vertical transport of energy can set a complex process into motion that leads to the breakdown of the high altitude colo pressure area that typically spins above the North Pole during the winter which is known as the polar vortex. And this polar vortex plays a major role in determining how much Arctic air spills southward toward the middle latitudes. When there is a strong polar vortex, cold air tends to stay bottled up in the Arctic. However, when the vortex weakens or is disrupted, like a spinning top that suddenly starts wobbling, it can cause polar air masses to surge south, while the Arctic experiences mild and average temperatures. So, all right, the whole article is there. You can see there's a lot more to this. Um couple videos here to check into but is it any coincidence that um, this event is occurring after we have made it past the December 21st mark after we've crossed the plane of the ecliptic probably not this is all par for the course remember when we crossed on the 21st it was just the beginning okay it wasn't the day where everything was going to happen it was the beginning of something new a cycle ended, a new cycle is coming in. With the cycle comes lots of changes. Scientists know now that, and the reference in the last video to energy from space talks about that as well. The energy coming from space, from the sun, NASA, you can go to NASA, there's articles there now talking about this climate change and their understanding that 
the sun actually does have an effect upon the climate. Go figure, right? I mean, it took NASA lots of money to figure that one out, but at least they figured it out, and if that's what it takes, hey, more power to them. All right, moving right along. So last week I played a video on the show, and it was called Mr. Obama, Please Add Me to Your White House Kill List. And this was a video by David Laurie Vanderbeek. He's a candidate for of the Constitutional Party, and he's running for governor of Nevada for 2014. Uh, you heard what he had to say in the video, very strong and direct, and I think very important in what he had to say. And I think every American should listen to this, not only this interview, but go back and listen to the other videos that he's put out and listen to what he's saying. Listen to the words and listen to the spirit behind it, okay? So, I'm going to play a good chunk of this interview for you here before we get to our prayer meditation at the end. Here. Uh, welcome to First Contact Radio. This is Josh Poet. I am here with David Laurie Vanderbeek. He's a constitutional candidate for the Office of Governor for the state of Nevada. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you. You with you, Josh. How are you doing today? Awesome. How about Excellent. you? I'm doing well, thank you. So I saw your video online, actually a couple of the videos, and felt that I wanted to get in touch with you afterwards to talk to you about the ideas you were talking about, but I guess even more than just the topic of what you were talking about, because there was um, qualities that you presented that were important, like I know you seem to exhibit leadership qualities, a state of fearlessness, and there was also some compassion in there because there wasn't a violent nature. You were very direct on on your approach, and so yeah. I want to talk to you about some of that. Well, let me uh, let me just be uh, let's just. Very, very direct on on your approach, and so yeah. I want to talk to you about some of that. Well, let me uh, let me just be uh, let's just go with that because there's lots of great things that you said and I really appreciate those. Um, the defining characteristic of Americans, one of those, is that we don't live in fear, and that we can speak our minds, live our lives, practice our religion, or be sinners or be irreligious. Uh, that we can live our lives, we live and let live. That uh, we let people do their thing and. Um, that the government doesn't uh, doesn't dictate our lives, steal our property. Um, so, the place that I come from now, uh, I've I've spoken out in terms of de being defensive and protecting our lives. Uh, in the first videos that uh, that you're probably t that you probably saw, I don't know if you saw that I talked about Sandy Hook, and I I talked about uh, it was a video say that said um, did Obama order Sandy Hook shooting to get your guns. Mm -hmm. then, I did oh, a, that one. then I did a video, if Obama sends police to take your gun, civil war. Mm -hmm. And then I did a video, Mr. Obama put me on the White House kill list. And then, that one. then I did a video uh, most recently, uh, Obama will kill more kids to get your guns. And uh, and so basically the, the purpose is to draw the line in the sand, and it's not out of anger or rage or hate. It's out of love. And, and so when I speak in terms of defensive violence, violence it, it can be a very loving act. And let me explain. It, you'll understand that it can be loving and compassionate to be violent if, for example, you're standing up to a bully who's picking on somebody innocent or weak. Violence can be loving and compassionate if you're if you're standing up to a tyrant who would murder and abuse and poison and imprison innocent people. Um, so, so um, I am coming from a place of love and compassion because I understand there's a great documentary documentary that everyone should see called Innocence Betrayed. It's the history of gun control. And so it goes through all the historical examples of gun control around the world. Even Gandhi, a man who, who didn't ever use offensive weapons in his work, said it was one of the greatest crimes of the British uh, uh, government to disarm the Indian people. So uh, just 
self-defense is a, an essential human right. And, and um, it's not the only issue by far. I mean, there's lots of other issues that I mention in there. The First Amendment uh, I mentioned. I talk a lot about uh, the banks that have purchased our politicians. So there, there are these interrelated pieces. The removal of the Second Amendment is really important for the elite that control Obama. And Obama's not the only problem. He's just the head puppet, so to speak. He's the, the master puppet of all the puppets in Washington. The reason why Obama doesn't get held accountable is because of the level of corruption in Washington. And so what we have to do as, as people in the states is we have to nullify Obama. We have to castrate or emasculate the power of the office of president because it has grown tyrannical. <clears throat> that doesn't mean we ever have to harm the president. We don't have to do anything to the president. We just have to ignore the president and turn our backs on him. And that, uh, that kind of shunning it can be collectively done at a county level, a town level, a city level a state level, uh, that we can collectively just say, no, we're not going to do that, and you can try to send in federal troops, ultimately, that you have to say, okay, if you're going to fire at us, we're going to fire back. I uh, got a message on Facebook, and uh, there it was kind of amusing because the uh, – the, the person seemed like a good guy, and he is a good guy, I'm sure, but he had been told by somebody else that I had refused to take the Oath Keeper's Oath publicly. And uh, so um, my newest video that is going to be, that is actually up right now, it just went live, is mm -hmm. the Oath Keeper's Oath and my oath. My oath is is greater or, and goes beyond the Oath Keeper's Oath because the Oath Keep, Keeper's Oath is, all the things that, that military and law enforcement will not do, uh, such as not they will not obey orders to disarm the American people. I went further in my videos, and I've already gone beyond that, so I took the Oath Keeper's Oath, but I gave my own oath that I will, I will fire on, upon Americans in certain situations. And one of those situations in which I will fire upon fellow Americans is if those Americans obey orders to disarm the American people. Now, let me explain a little bit further. When I say fellow Americans, we have to stop thinking of police and law enforcement and military as police, law enforcement, and military. All they are is fellow Americans. They're fellow Americans. And if they choose to break the constitutional covenant that, that we have with one another as a people, then their authority is void. It's nullified. It's null. And so you have a right to defend yourself against Americans, and that's all you're doing is that these are other Americans. You have to stop. We have to stop viewing them as the authorities, you know, because they're not authorities. They're just fellow Americans, and they're fellow Americans that are, frankly, uh, dishonest. They are distorted. They are fraudulent. Why? Because they're trying to be something they are not, and that is our masters. Because as human beings, we are all endowed. I don't think we're necessarily even endowed by our creator. I think that it's even stronger than that, that just by being virtue of being in a living intelligence, uh, that's not just God-granted. That's just a fact. I don't think even God himself can violate the freedom of an intelligence, an intelligent being. And... Uh, I, so I don't think God creates freedom. I think he just acknowledges freedom that is a reality, a cosmic reality in the universe. And um, so, so when someone tries to take over your life as if they can, it's always a fraud. And the reality is, the truth is that at any moment, at any given moment, at every moment, you are free to reassert your sovereignty over your own life. And all I'm trying to do is to help Americans break out of the matrix of believing that they must obey these new laws, that, they must, that these laws are even valid. That, for example, I don't, anyway, uh, the executive orders, right? We just got those executive orders from President Obama. Right. Saying he's going to use mental health to enforce gun control. Um, those 
are, number one, by the constitutional covenant that we have with one another as people, uh, he can't issue any laws. He can't act like a monarch. That's a fraud. And so my advice to you as Americans is stop cooperating with the federal government. And if they've determined, and they have declared war on you, psychological, financial, social war on you, and not yet physical, but they're about to, you have every right to use deception in a strategy against your enemies. And now I'm talking about good old-fashioned lying. If the government is going to come to you and question you and, and use every, and they can and will use every word against you, it, not even in a court of law anymore, but in some uh, private uh, camp or, you know, NDAA-style uh, secret detainment, um, you know, you have every right to lie to these people. Stop cooperating. Don't tell them. If someone was going to rape you or stomp on your throat, what, would you cooperate with that? I don't think so. No, and that's the way our government is becoming. So stop cooperating. Uh, you know, my brothers and sisters, stop cooperating. And I also want to say this. You know, I don't get up and do videos to try to convince everybody of what's going on. I'm just trying to connect with people who are my family, like you, my spiritual, my constitutional family. You're the people who are already awake. We just need to organize as people who are awake because there's enough of us already to stop this nonsense. America is – go ahead. You just said a, an important word there because I was talking with someone the other day, and, and it, it seems that the difference between what the government system has and what we the people have is – just organization, because they have their organized units. We could see them. We got the army units. The way the government's sort of organized, but we, the people, were just kind of out there. Everybody's kind of willy nilly, scattered a bit. So yeah, the response to that is the the, the instructions are first. The first thing you've got to do is you have to commit personally to do whatever it takes to remain a free human being. You know, you're not okay. free. Because a piece of paper called the Constitution says you're free. You were born free. You're free just by being a human being. And so in some ways the Constitution does us a disservice because it makes it sound like we're limited to whatever that document says. No. No, you're free. You're free no matter what the lawyers write, no matter what the lawyers have come up with in Congress. You're free. And you have to assert that freedom and you have to push back. You're not free because of a piece of paper called the Bill of Rights, okay? You're free. Now, um, in your, the first thing you have to determine is to do whatever it takes to remain free. The second thing is to study out all the, all the information, to take in the information as much as you can, and then do, look in your life at what you can do to prepare to protect what is yours, at this point, that's where what, one thing you need to do. And, and then you need to organize yourself with like-minded people. Now, those might be blood relatives, but oftentimes they're not. Some of the people I'm the closest to uh, are actually not blood-related at all. You know, they're just people I've come in contact with it through the Patriot Movement. It is like meeting long-lost family members when you get involved in the Patriot Movement because we tend to see eye-to-eye -eye on a lot of things and some of the best human beings. Uh, that I've ever encountered. Uh, and then at that point, you just live your life, and you rock and roll, and you go steady, and uh, you, you know move steadily forward. You endure, and you persist, and you go from one thing to another. I didn't get to where I am as a, an influence in the patriot movement overnight. <clears throat> this process began for me when I watched 9-11 uh, occur in some ways, because when I watched the towers fall, my thought was not being terrified or traumatized, my thought was that there was something very natural about what was happening to our nation. And so once the war started and we started to lose uh, rights and the wars were illegal and they were based on lies, I continued to have more questions from there. In 2003, I, I studied credit just on my, independently and then came across The Creature of Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. In 2005, a brother-in-law who... Uh, he uh, brought uh, Terror Storm and Endgame to a family Christmas. And, uh, you know, I went evolving from there. And, and here we are in, in 2013, 
so I went through w- waking up, doing food storage, getting firearms, pr- taking care of my family. And then in 2010, I could see the tyranny getting, the police getting really aggressive. And that's the year that I, I decided to run for state assembly. I got involved in the Constitution Party. I found that they were my kind of people. I earned their trust. I was loyal. I stuck to the party. And then the next go around in 2012, they asked me to run for U.S. Senate. I built momentum. I got 50,000 votes. I only spent $650. I didn't have any kind of campaign machinery behind me. But as a result of that, uh, I, I contacted people who wanted to support me and wanted to work with me, and they and they have. And now I have a bigger campaign. And um, the day after the world was supposed to end, I started doing videos on the 22nd that happened to go viral. And I feel like I'm I'm just speaking for people who haven't had a voice in the Patriot Movement, that we, we've wanted to say these things, but we haven't. And so in some ways, we are the day after the world ended. And in some ways, we are what comes after Ron Paul. You know, we're going to take this to the next level. And, um, and so the world did end on uh, 12-21-2012. It did end. And a new era began, and people were ready for that era of complete and full, vibrant truth. I say truth. Let's follow the truth, the whole truth, no matter what the consequences. Let's follow it to its complete end. I want the truth in every way. I don't want some fancy lies to protect me or make me feel secure. I don't want the government to stage terrorist events because they feel that they need to confiscate our arms so everybody's safer, like some Democrats suggested to me a couple days ago. I want the truth in everything. Mm -hmm. Let's take it to its complete end. And if we have cancer, and if we have Satanists in the government sacrificing kids, uh, like like they found in the Franklin sex scandal when John DeCamp and Lauren Schmidt were state senators um, in Nebraska, and uh, and if that stuff's still going on, I I, want to know the truth, and I want to go and find those innocents, and I want to protect them, and I want to expose it and, and solve the problem and get on with healing and get back to, to being uh, solid families. You know that the FBI doesn't report statistics on satanic abuse or ritual murders? Did you know I that? I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. They won't report the statistics, neither will the police. So hmm. anyway, that's an interesting factoid. Um, <clears throat> not that I want to go off in that direction, but it's just an indicator of all the children that go missing and all the, the victims of those types of deaths. There are some supremely evil people around the world and uh whether or not we believe in satan uh they, there are people that do in positions of power and uh and the problem is is when we try to expose that kind of thing the victims are laughed off nobody wants to believe the victims and um i say as a governor one thing that i would do is i would create a little uh think tank to take in information about all conspiracies and just to try to debunk them See, because through the scientific method, the scientific method is simple. It's, it's to take a theory and test it. And if the theory can't be proven false, then there's probably some truth in it. And uh, so I would have a think tank, and I would let people submit all their conspiracy theories. And uh, if we could find, uh, if we could not find a way to disprove it, then uh, we would we would look into it. Whether that's HARP, uh, whether that's Area 51 whether that's, uh, you know, different kinds of weapons, like the CIA having a heart attack gun, uh, whether that's uh, uh, the uh, bioweapons, uh, viruses, vaccines, uh, fluoride. You know, I would uh, create a think tank as a governor and look at all. I'll listen to anything because I can't put past anything. I can't put anything past this government. I mean, a conspiracy theorist is simply someone who questions known liars. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I really, that wasn't my thought. I've heard other people say that. That's just the, the, the fact of the matter is that conspiracies in our government are real. A conspiracy is simply a group of people meeting in secret to do something illegal. That happens all the time. You don't have right. to fantasize that. That's the, that's the definition of a conspiracy. All right. I'm going to stop it right there. It's about half of the interview. The rest is available on the link uh, on our page, firstcontactradio.com, or just below the video here at YouTube. And you can find David and all of his videos at youtube.com forward slash David Lorry, D-A-V-I-D-L-O-R-Y. 
All right, so moving on, just before we do our meditation here, I've got uh, a video that might make you smile. Just thought I'd bring a little uh, smile to you before we do this. Check this out. This is kind of funny. Here we go. Thank you. Just putting the feeder hose into the back of the machine. We're getting water directly from the lake over there. Is there a blanket or just something like a warm? Hey guys, hey guys, it's got company. Let's just move away from that. It's a bear. It's a bear. It's, it's fine. We're fine. Right. Just we'll calmly walk over here. We're fine. You too, sir. Now, please. Let's just give the bear a minute. He's going to move on. Just let the bear be. Okay, can we go back to work now, Mr. Oh, Ranger? The bear's now leaving. Okay, gang, it's, good for, it's clear for us to go back to set. Oh, can you, it's a polar bear. All you wanted to do was use the washing machine. I wasn't scared. You were. All right, just a little something, a little bit of funniness there for you here. Last part, he's got all the other bears lined up, ready to go. All right, there you go. Something to put a smile on your face before... Uh, we jump into the next phase. All right, meditation time. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Relax. Let's think of good thoughts. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Another deep breath. And exhale. I want you to imagine in your mind's eye the country where you live. Think about the country where you live. Imagine the shape of that country. See it. See that image. Now as you look at your country, the place where you live, I want you to look closely for any place where you see darkness, violence, evil, problems. And I want you to locate those places and once you locate those places, I want you to imagine that you are sending out beams of light from your hands into those areas. And as you do, the light illuminates those dark areas. And you continue to light all the areas until you see your whole country filled with light. And as others do the same thing in their country, and in the same country where you're at, we find that we cleanse our planet. We realize that cleansing the planet is up to each one of us. And when we take responsibility for cleaning what's going on in the outside, we also feel that something is being cleaned up on the inside as well. So imagine seeing the country where you live, bright and shiny. Imagine seeing the whole world as bright and shiny as everyone is doing their part. And let's imagine from our heart chakra sending out love. Imagine the color green going out to the planet, filling it with love, sending its love down into the earth, and up into the cosmos honor your connection to all that is was and ever shall be 
And let's just think a good thought for everybody in the world. Let's think a positive thought of strength. And let's just focus on that inner strength that we have. And through the course of the day, let our subconscious mind dwell upon that inner strength and teach us ways to use this strength in the most loving, compassionate way we can. And as our conscious, unconscious mind considers these ideas, let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. There you have it. That's the end of our show, our prayer, and our meditation. Thank you very much for being here. The links to all of the news reports are available as always at firstcontactradio.com. Or if you're YouTube watching, the playlist is right underneath the video itself. So check out the videos from today. Watch the fluoride video. Listen to the rest of the interview with David Laurie, Vanderbeek. And just to keep thinking good thoughts for the world. That's the best thing we can do. Remember, we are all in this together. We can all make a difference. We all know the difference between right and wrong. We just need to follow through with what we know. And the best way to do that is turn away from the fear that is being put out from anyone who is trying to keep us from that goodness. That's all I have to say for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more news information. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.